Let me introduce you to the online cover design tool that I had made for DIYBookCovers.com. There are other online graphics editors, but I wanted something that you could use without any downloads or templates or fonts, something you could use totally online to make really high quality book cover design. And so let me show you some of the features that make this tool unique. First, when we go to custom size, I like to design it a six by nine. That's a good cover size for both ebook, but also it's a six by nine cover at 300 DPI, so you can use it for print. But you can also set a five by eight, or there's these custom sizes like a Facebook header or a Twitter header that are just the right size. So you can just design them and they're ready to be used. And these business cards and postcards are also big enough at 300 DPI that you can design them in the tool and you can save them as a PNG and they'll be ready for printing at high quality. But you can also set your own custom size. So for example, when we do full print covers, you'll be able to set the width to include the dimensions for your spine width, which is really important. And I'll show you how to do that later with other videos. So with this tool, it's, it's pretty versatile. There's some built-in sizes that you can use right away, but you can also change it to make just about anything. But I'm going to go back to the 6x9 because this is a, a good size for a book cover, and I'm just going to start importing images. And you want your pictures to be about 1600 pics wide, which is this wide. Um, if I was making something smaller, I wouldn't need pictures that big. But I'm just going to grab a few pictures to show you what I can do with this tool that you can't really do with any other tools. Let's try kind of a romancy cover. So maybe I'll take something like this. But maybe I don't like this background so much. And I want to look for another background, maybe a city. So here's a London picture. So if I go back, now I have a layers panel over here. I can hide this layer. And with this layer, I'm going to want to delete around that couple. And I have a delete tool. This is actually something that I would do. I would hire someone on Fiverr.com to do in Photoshop because with this online tool, I'll be able to get close if I make the size pretty small and I'm careful and just go around the edges. Um, but it would be better if somebody else did it in Photoshop. They would do a cleaner job. But I can just do a rough job for now so you can see how it works. And I can just delete around the edges. I started off a little bit rough over here. And it actually gives it a kind of nice glow because I'm deleting a little bit too far. So it just looks like there's a lot of light which can have kind of a magical glow. So then if I go back to my layers panel, I can put this one underneath and then I get the couple on top. And if I spent more time and did that more cleanly, it would look pretty realistic. And there's still a little bit of a, a line up here. So I've got to just make sure that I delete it all. So I could do something like that. I can use my arrow tool to move these around. I could change the size, maybe make it down like this where it fits a little better. And then I have to delete some more. But then let's say I want to um, change the colors a bit. So I can go here to my colors and change this. and change the brightness for contrast, saturation, if I wanted to, to make it a little more interesting. Contrast. I also have some built-in filters here, um, but a lot of these are too strong. So they're kind of fun to play with, but um, this one's pretty nice, the Jack has. I might leave that. And then I would have to also blend this couple image so that the colors match. And like I said, you'd want to go through and um, crop around them a little bit better. 
Although I could also try adding on this image, now that I've gotten some of it, I could go to effects and add a bit of a glow. And if I did that well, it might cover up some of the defects from not deleting it so well. It also helps them stand out a lot. Oops. And I'm just deleting a little bit extra here to get rid of that glow here. So it's not a bad start for a book cover. I'd probably want to add some more. So I'm going to add an overlay. It's nice to add an overlay because it kind of helps the whole cover seem like one piece of art. And I can go back to my layers and I can choose all these different blending modes, which is something that you see in Photoshop, but you won't find in other online graphics tools. And I'll probably do something like that if I want to make it look more historical or old fashioned. Maybe just something like overlay. Overlay is a nice effect. It's kind of a little sharper. It also gives a little bit of texture, changes the color a little bit. There's too much glow on this couple now. So I'd actually take the glow out. You could also do something if you wanted to add transparency. I wouldn't do it here because they're in the foreground, but for example, if I wanted them to be up in the sky and really big, then I could do something like, like that. And that gives you a really nice transparent effect with different layers. That's something you'll see in really nice book covers, but you probably won't know how to do on your own because most Unless you're really good with Photoshop, there aren't any online graphics editors that can do this kind of effect. So something like this, when you're blending a bunch of layers together, you're blending a bunch of texture layers on top, that's how you get really high quality book cover design. And then I would go on and add some text. I've added a bunch of fonts into this tool. Um, it'll give you quite a selection, but there's no way to add your own fonts in this tool. So you may just want to start and use this tool to make your cover art and then use other tools to get the text right or to add the text. You can use Microsoft Word or um, different programs to add text on top of the art, but getting the art is really important and this online cover design tool is pretty powerful for getting the right art. Um, I'm just going to say romance. Then I can move this around, position it wherever I want. I'd probably put it down. With your text, you want light text to, ha to be on darker backgrounds. So this batch here is mostly dark, so it's a nice place to put a white text. I could also put it down there, probably for the title name. But then I'm going to choose a different font. There's a good mix of fonts for um, for most different genres, and you'll be fine with most of these fonts unless you're doing sometimes, I mean, romance, a standard romance, you can use a pretty basic font. For a paranormal romance or certain types of young adult, they are really interested in dynamic, interesting fonts they haven't seen before, really beautiful fonts. So for some genres, you're going to want to find a more interesting font that's more unique. But for a lot of genres, there's plenty of selection in this tool. And then I could also, to make it stand out a little bit more, 
I'm going to want to go to effects and add a little bit of a shadow behind it. And I've also added a darker glow to help it stand out a little bit more. And if I wanted to make that shadow even more profound, I could just use control copy, control paste and make another version, another layer. I'm going to want to space my text out somewhere here. So I have space plus and minus. And then I can also just resize it this way. So it's a decent cover that I made in, I don't know, 10 minutes. Um, I also might want to add a little bit more. If I go to text effects, these are too bold, but um, once I get them started, now I can go down here to effects and I can see what I've just added. So I can take away these bevels or the gradient. I don't like bevel on text, so you wanna be a little careful what you use. That's a little better. a little bit too strong, too yellow, but um, that's a little better, softer. The yellow really will catch your eye. Um, you want it to be part of the art and to look like it. your text belongs on the cover. You want it to be eye-catching, but not too much. That yellow is not so bad. You might use it, but I like that better. It's a little bit softer. And I don't like having a really strong drop shadow, but it does help it stand out quite a bit. So I could just save this as a project file and then I can come back and I can edit all of these la layers in the text or add some later if I want to add a review or a tagline or something. That'd be easy to do. But I can also save it as a JPEG and it will be ready to use for Kindle and I can just upload it. So this is a project file, which is FIE, and you can only use this in this online software. You won't be able to open it in any other program, but you can save it and this program's free. So you can just come back to the website and keep working on it anytime.